Welcome back to HM and Big E Review Things. Today uh, we are talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. We all watched it over the weekend uh, separately and uh, we have, we'll go with non-spoilers first as overall thoughts, then we'll have a spoiler part, then we can talk details. Rob, what did you think, non-spoilers, Guardians Volume 3? I think for me in a very, you know, couple of sentences, I think it was a satisfying end. Definitely feels like a conclusion to the whole story. And I'm really glad I was able to watch it with my daughter. Now, I'm surprised you watched this movie, Rob. <laughs> if I remember, <laughs> after Ant-Man, it was made very clear that you would not be watching any Marvel Phase 5 movies. <laughs> what changed? Chris Pratt. Mm -hmm. I like Chris Pratt. I oh. mean, Parks and Recreation. Yes. Right? Very good. And Jurassic you know, World. Jurassic World. Mm -hmm. Lego Movie. And then Mario put it over the top. So, you know, Chris Pratt was what drew me in. I see. No, but you knew he was starring in this already, <laughs> so what changed? He continues to deliver. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, Robert. His children <laughs> wanted to watch it. <laughs> He's a good father. All right, yeah. homie, what do you think? I thought it was, it was a very solid movie. Um, James Gunn, I think brings a different style to the entire thing. So mm -hmm. it didn't really exactly feel like what I'm always afraid of. Every Marvel trope, you know, every look looks, you know, it looks yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I enjoyed it. I think I agree with Rob. It was a good conclusion. It kind of reminded me of like Toy Story 3 where mm. it's it sort of like they got to really beat the odds now. That's a high comparison. Well, in, high in, in terms of like a send-off. I see. I like see. a satisfying send-off okay, to, okay, okay. to the original crew. Yeah. I see, I see. Uh, for me, I thought that it was... My comparison would not be to Toy Story 3. My comparison would be to Return of the Jedi, which also which turns 40. And it was released. This movie was released May 4th on the 40th anniversary of the Return of the Jedi. I feel that it's as the end of a trilogy. It's not quite as good or as original as the first, um, but to Rob's point, it's a good emotional kind of ending. It's a good wrap-up of all of their character arcs. Um, we'll kind of get into when we get into spoilers a little bit, but I thought it, they all ended up in good places. Right, but unlike Return of the Jedi, I felt like these were three separate stories and bad guys, right? It, it's, yes. Sure, so it's, sure, to sure. me, it's a little bit more like Toy Story, where it's oh, like see, individual stories. Okay, it okay. is a good wrap up. It yeah, is yeah, a good yeah. send off, but yeah. it's really basically telling a, a new story. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think in terms of, uh, I think we're comparing them on different criteria. Right, right. Well, I'm just saying kind of like, they're clearly trying to take what worked from the first one. They right. tried something different in the second one. It was too too kind of uh, jokey, and they kind of dialed it back to be more in line with the tone of the first one. Right. And then adding some kind of heavier emotional stuff. Right. Okay. Um, those are kind of our overall first impression non-spoiler stuff. But let's dive right into spoilers. And I think there's a few interesting things to talk about here. Right. This was, I think, this movie tried... Uh, a lot of things. I think it's swung for the fences and it might not have hit everything, but uh, that's the end of my baseball knowledge to make an analogy. <laughs> uh, so, you know, yeah, they're, they're swinging. So, uh, let's go right into spoilers. Uh, my first gripe, my biggest gripe. Okay, we're going negative. We're going right in the negative. No, because actually, overall, my, my, my overall feeling on this movie is actually quite positive. Mm -hmm. But my biggest outstanding negative is just the choice of Adam Warlock being played as Goofy. I don't know the character very much. And he's supposed not, to be serious. Well, I don't. I, I, I'm sort of even okay with that. That he's supposed to be serious, and they're kind of taking him a different route. But it just felt so separate from the whole movie. So you don't. You, you could have cut the whole Adam uh, Warlock. Adam character. Warlock and what is the the the, the uh, Aisha or yeah, uh, the, the, the Sovereign? Sovereign, thank you, yeah. the Sovereign. You could have cut them both completely out, and the movie would have been basically the same. Uh, so I, I think it serves as an introduction to him, much like other movies serves introduction. Like even Spider Man was introduced in Civil War, very small part, yeah. and then launched him to do a trilogy. And right. I don't know if they'll do that with Warlock, but it seemed like that was what they're going for. Yeah, they're clearly setting him up for future movies. Sure, sure, sure. And then, but, well, you say that, but then at the end, the the end credit scene did not say Guardians will return. Right, Star Lord will return. Star Lord will return, and no, the but, Guardians. But he, I think he's going to be in other type of ensemble movies. Right, right. Maybe he won't get a solo film. But were you okay with the Goofy take? 
I don't know Adam Warlock. I don't I, either. I, I read about his history later. Mm -hmm. Rob knows a lot more about comics. <laughs> well, no, I, I don't know. I know of Adam Warlock. Yeah. But to me, he always came off as a more serious, kind of calculated person. From what I understand, right? he was the one in the original Infinity Gauntlet story to actually wield he, the gauntlet. He, he, he wielded yeah. it. Yeah. But I think their, their their explanation was he was hatched a bit early from his cocoon. Right. So he's like a little boy, boy child. Right. And he was sort of comic relief. Again, you're right. I don't know if they needed a another comic relief because mm -hmm. the entire cast is comic relief yeah, 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 so, yeah, so yeah. Sh he should have played the, the serious guy right yeah, everybody was, was like awkward. really really goofy and funny no and but but to your point it is very awkward how he fit into the story in other words it's like they already had the storyboard written it's mm -hmm. like okay how do we include Adam Warlock? Right. And yeah. this is what they went yeah they already had people chasing after the Guardians to try to get Rocket and then now, they, oh, we're just going to introduce some other people to do it. Anyway, that was, that's my main biggest complaint about the movie. Otherwise, I actually really enjoyed most did, of the did movie. Did you like the story of it centered around Rocket's past? Yeah, um, I mean, I think we've come enough of a journey with Rocket as a character that it's good to explore that and right. kind of fills in that backstory mm -hmm. a little bit that's always been hinted at. Um, my issue and a lot of people's issue was that the, the flashback narrative structure where Rocket yeah. is not interacting with the main cast for you most know of the most of the movie. He's just lying there. And that's always really risky to do because yeah. the whole point is the chemistry of the team and one member is just out for 75% of it. Um, you know, and I think some of the flashbacks he maybe went but a little I bit I think long. maybe they did that on purpose because, remember, he's been in two Guardians plus the Avenger movies. Yeah. And he sort of plays the same kind of role in every single right. movie. He's a kind of like a snap, snarky true. little uh, creature who's got a, you know, chip on his shoulder. So take him out of the movie. Well, I think maybe let the other characters breathe a little yeah. bit, including Nebula. Yeah, she yeah. had a lot more yeah. things to do in this movie. Yeah. And, and Mantis and Drax. Mantis you know, and thing, Drax. Yeah. It had a little bit more. And, yeah. um, so, I, I mean, I would applaud James Gunn because he had about eight characters to balance, mm -hmm. and somehow he was able to give them a narrative arcs and growth and, and good lines for most Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Most of it. And then that's not even including probably the one or two bad guys that they had. Yep. So, he had like 10 guys to work with. So, taking Rocket out, I kind of see why he okay. did that. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. That's a good point. I think we made a similar comment when we were talking about Infinity War, where again, you have so many characters and right. it's just how to balance them. And they did a good job, obviously, the Russos. Uh, and yeah, I, that's true. Uh, they, they, I mean, Rocket aside, whether you like him in in the coma or not, uh, all the other characters kind of had their moments and had a character arc. Uh, Rob, what are your some spoiler thoughts? Things you like, things you didn't like. What sticks out? Well, uh, okay. Since we're talking about things we didn't like, yeah, I'm gonna focus on the plot. <laughs> the issue I had was, okay, you know how in the end, you know, we have to save the children. And right. then we had to save the animals. <laughs> okay. What about the six billion people that were on that planet? <laughs> they were gone. I was like... That's hey, Alderaan, no. baby. <laughs> yeah, it's like there was such an urgency to save these people. But then the people that were on the planet... They like, were already yeah, dead. We don't care. They were already dead, right? You mean they had no chance? No, I think the, the planet wasn't... It was being. It was Alderaan. It was, yeah, it was already blown up. Blown up already. It was going to yeah. blow up, but the Guardian's like... No, yeah, it, had, we, it had already blown up. I think when the spaceship lifted, yeah, they yeah, were kind of yeah, yeah. That it's pretty much the so, but auto, yes. auto destruct. But right. I'm just saying, like at, at that point, point, they didn't really try to make. It's like oh, we don't care. We're not going to save anyone, right? right? right. So right. it's just a small nitpick. But <laughs> overall, I think some of the things I like. I, I did like some of the pacing of the humor. It wasn't like an emotional moment, mm -hmm. and then we're going to throw in a joke. I right? like Guardians too. Mm, yeah. I hated that about Guardians 2, that yeah. it was every line was a joke. Every serious moment, joke, 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 joke. joke. And Thor and Love and Thunder? We, we, I, I think that's even worse because it's, <laughs> that was like improv comedy. Yeah. yeah. I feel like with James Gunn's history, he, he tried to tone it down a little bit, but the jokes still were thought through. Yeah. You know, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, just like it reminds me of Peacemaker, to be honest, and the Suicide Squad, right. squad a little bit of what right, he right. did yeah, there. That's true. Right. Which is why, like, then what happened with two? Two, I thought, was an anomaly in terms of like a two by far in 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 this trilogy is, is in my opinion, the weakest of the of the three. Yeah, movies. I agree with that. Yeah. 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 Yep, so that that's the other thing I liked. I thought the humor, yeah. that he definitely lessons learned from volume two. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah let's yeah. try it for volume three. Right. Did you feel the movies was really long? 
I did it actually. No, I, I, I know you kind of said that you, you, you did. You I, I think they could, for me, they could have cut maybe 15 minutes. It, yeah. it felt like it dragged at some points, but overall, for the two and a half hours that yeah. these movies are, this one definitely felt like it was, was well right. constructed. Yeah. And um, I like some of the themes that they, like James Gunn really works on the themes. Like there was definitely a theme of sort of obviously trauma and healing, but mm -hmm. also, you know, what is. What is brokenness and what is perfection and and they, they're sort of playing off this yeah. because the whole idea of guardians is they're they kind of there's beauty in the broken right, right like right, and right, and they right. embrace each other's faults yeah. and weaknesses to make up a family and so um, you know I, I think I like that I mean there was also the, some deeper dives where when they land on the counter Earth it's if you notice it's like a 1960s or 70s suburbia yeah. Yeah, 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 which yeah. is sort of you know known to be this like mass produced utopia kind of right, concept right, right, and right, obviously right. like a manufactured yeah manufactured yeah, yeah, and yeah. obviously you know it's not you know you can right. see a lot of brokenness in there and mm. crime and there's a lot of little subtle things that i think are underneath all that comedy that i think i, I really enjoy yeah he does well he does that well he does yeah that well. so uh one thing another thing that i did like i mean again uh, we i could be here for a while listening off the things that i generally liked mm -hmm. i really liked gamora and her whole arc yeah and her or, whole arc Fresh with, take. with peter yeah, yeah. that the the simple obvious take would be oh Gamora's back and they'll slowly rebuild that relationship and and she's part of the team at the end right but yeah. it's not she was brought back essentially for Peter to kind of have closure and to say goodbye and to move on and and then she found her own family this time not with the Guardians but the the Ravagers who she seemed really close with and and kind of had that family yeah, feel um, as well the the Expendables <laughs> with Stallone <laughs> Stallone yeah and actually the one. The one Ravager that was missing that I was looking for was Academy Award winner Michelle Yeoh. Yes, yeah, I she's, too she was she's too busy. She's too busy. I yeah. noticed she was. Busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Her salary increased. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You can't afford it. But anymore. I did. I really like that as a choice for for Gamora that they didn't force it back into a relationship. That you know, it this made sense logically. She found another family. Why would anything Peter say or do kind of change that? And by the end, they had a respect for each other, and they went their separate ways. I really like that. I really like that. Yeah, it felt like the there was an epicness to the story that I liked. There was a lot of different sets and mm -hmm. different worlds, and I think they they they, they did a good job with that. Yeah, that fight scene in the in the corridor. Of, yeah, they did. A, it was like it was a great. one take fight yeah, scene. Yeah, right, yeah. that was done well. Mm -hmm. um, I think the word I'd use for some of this was enough restraint. Like, like, I could have seen, like, I think the Christmas special, they were going all out with the jokes, and it was, like, getting annoying, the characters. But it's a Christmas special. It's a short thing. Right, but it's that. it's kind of in the similar vein. But in this movie, like, I felt Mantis was more restrained. I think it was, there were some touching moments with her yep. and Drax. And yep. uh, even Groot, was, you know, doing not the same thing over and over again with him. And I, I just felt like they did a good fresh take for some reason. They, they did a good job of that. Yeah, speaking of restraint, what did you guys think of the villain? Because it's not like the universe is going to end kind of thing. It was a much smaller scale. And yep. the motivation of, you know, the, the villain was, I just want to create a perfect society, right? Which is kind of Thanos-y, no? Yeah, I think I, I think in the comics he's like that too. The high evolutionary is always, you know, tweaking with, mm -hmm. with people's genetics and evolutions to try to create this perfect He's being. Mr. Sinister. Uh, yeah, the non-X-Men version of it, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I really like that. Uh, that he wasn't a universe ending threat. I was literally trying to, just as you were talking, thinking back to the past few movies, they were all universe ending threats, right? Right. Love and Thunder, oh, go, the Gore the God Butcher is going to kill everyone, get to eternity, and, you know, just... Kill all the gods. Kill all the gods, and then everything will go into chaos. And then Multiverse of Madness was... Wanda, I don't know. It, it, seemed, it, was, it seemed universe ending, right? I don't know. She wanted to kill everyone to... Oh, it was at least earth kids. ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this just, I, I like that the scale or the threat, I guess, was more localized and it was very, and it was cosmic. And so it, it felt a very appropriate threat, both in terms of like location and in terms of scale for the Guardians. Yeah. So and, I did and, like it. And they do a really good job making you hate this villain. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I mean, the cruelty. Did you find him torture. over the top? Some parts, but he, he got more and more kind of cruel and unhinged at the end. Yeah. And so one track minded. Right. I guess a little bit, uh, that's a little bit tropey, but I was okay with this villain. Yeah, I, I, I thought this was a good villain too. I, I thought, yeah, it, his motivations made sense. I like that there's a natural tie to a member of the team yeah. as opposed to sometimes it's just some threat that, oh, oh that's a good end point. because, oh, Ronan is here. 
and you have to end even though there's tons of other people that could be helping, but right. you have to do it. So I, I, I kind of like that. Uh, so I, I, yeah, and I like the progression of getting crazier and crazier and because he's so obsessed with, with, with getting... I, I was a little bit surprised that they took um, this theme of genetic manipulation and genocide. And they're, they're pretty dark themes. Yeah. And I think for children, watching like <laughs> animals PG. that are that are kind of cybernetic, yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, monstrosities, it was a little bit scary for them. Actually, it reminded me of Toy Story. Yeah, that's when right. they first yeah, arrived in Sid's yeah, room. Yeah, Sid's house, and yeah. The, and the little the spider, thing. The spider thing. I yeah. actually yeah. asked Rochelle, you know, my daughter, she's only 12 and a half but like you know i asked her did you like those animals she actually was you know she was okay with them yeah i thought the spider bunny was yeah. kind of, or the floor uh, yeah, floor floor i thought yeah. th that would probably scare her but she's like no i thought she was pretty cute what was the point of taking off the spider's uh the, the, the bunny's legs and the otter's arms no, he extended the otter's arms because <laughs> otters on. generally have short, short arms. arms. Good point, right? <laughs> okay. Point. But then, and then the bunny, I guess, has short legs, <laughs> and they didn't want to see the mouth. It, it was a lot of freaky stuff. And then, and, and then, and you know, the walrus had those um the, the things on the eyebrows to help it blink. <laughs> I noticed that. Oh, right. Yeah, I don't know. I it, know. That didn't really remind me of Toy Story, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, and also the Ninja Turtles with Rocksteady and Bebop. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, well, I thought I thought I thought when the turtle was oh, putting when the you... thing, I thought, I thought it was good. I thought it was gonna be Michelangelo. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was like, yeah. oh no, it looks... with the bandana, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think you, anything else kind of really stick out to you? I thought I really thought that the the emotional arcs and the character arcs for everyone. Like I like how Drax's story ended. I like how Nebula. You were talking about Nebula's growth and her arc was great. Mantis again taking a forging a different path. Logical. All of these characters ended at logical places. Yeah. For their arcs. I, like I, I I would the word I would use is it has a lot of heart. Mm. You know Peter Quill you know exemplifies that, but it's just a movie about heart. You know yeah. and family. It's going to do better than the Fast Family theme, but I think you know this whole idea. Maybe of, not at the box office. Not at the box know, office, yeah. right? Fast rules, but in terms of heart and, and family and sort of accepting one another, I, I I think it really those the three movies you know push that theme pretty. Did, pretty did the music tug at any nostalgia strings for you? Because this is '90s music now. Uh, no, it was. They had some '80s in there. Mm -hmm. um, I think the choice of music for Guardians is so key, right? Yeah, the yeah, first yeah. song, Radiohead's "Creep," mm -hmm. has a lot of. It's basically a song about like I'm a weirdo. It says I'm a weirdo. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. a creep. A I don't. I don't. Kind of being an outcast. Yeah, I'm not. I don't fit, don't fit in. in. And like all the themes, uh, music that James Gunn chooses, I think relate to exactly what's happening. So, right, right, right. so especially in this movie, yeah. uh, it had some cool rock, you know, you know, you know, fighting songs. But overall, I think the music is pretty cool yeah for me i, I really like again the set pieces mm -hmm. it was very colorful it wasn't yeah. like super dark i yeah. mean there was some dark but you could clearly see everything yeah, yeah which was yeah, really yeah. nice the only thing i didn't the like color grading usually yeah. is a bit more washed out yeah. yeah the only thing i didn't really like was the spaceship it looked kind of weird to me which I spaceship know. the the guardian space the bowie it's called the bowie the bowie named right. after david bowie of course <laughs> oh fun fact it's huge it's big i did not like the design of the bowie that was just my thought. I thought it was just a bit big for like a five person ship. It, it was huge. Yeah. I thought it was cool that it had saucer separation <laughs> of the three pods that could kind of go and then. Yeah, it was, it's okay. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to nitpick on the spaceship. Yeah, 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 it was fine. Yeah. Uh, I looked at the, 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 the Lego toy and it wasn't very good. <laughs> well, I'm on a. Rob does these lists, but I mean, Rob, this is going to. This is top five, bottom five for Marvel for you. Top half or bottom yeah. half? Oh, I would say it would be the top half. And then how far yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going. Where, where we? I, it's just outside for me. I had it just like outside the top 15. Okay. So it's like 17. Out of how many, how many movies? movies have there been now? Oh, let's take a look. Rob has a running list. Yes, yes, yeah. I have a list. I did too. I haven't yeah, updated like, yet. There's but... over, there's over thirty. Wow, right? Which again is crazy. Wait, wait, but that, if it's outside fifteen, that means it's bottom half. No, he's saying top fifteen. Oh, top. Oh, yeah. No, I, I would put it. Um, so okay, it's you know barely what? Barely top fifteen. Looking at the list, I would put this number fourteen. Okay, fourteen. Okay. Number barely, fourteen. Barely top half. Barely number fourteen for me. Um, which okay. is, if you think about it, Iron Man came out in what two thousand and eight? Yeah. That's 15, 15 years. years. 30, like, it's an average of two movies a year, which is a lot. 
And, so and which goes to the whole the theme people of people about talking about superhero fatigue. Yeah, marveled out or whatever. Yeah. I, I felt this one I didn't feel the fatigue as much because it seemed like a closed story. Yeah, and I'm okay with that. You know, yeah. they're ending their story. Okay, it didn't try to like set up ABC. I mean, at least I don't think it tried to set up ABC no, things. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but a lot of the nitpicks we had about you know Are the. Minor. the yeah, the, no, well, no. I think the 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 Marvel humor, yeah. the the global threat, yeah, 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 yeah. and the generic villain. Like, yeah, some of it was addressed yes. in Volume Three. That's I true. Think. Yeah, that's a good right. point. That's a good point. That's something that's plagued the past couple of Marvel movies that have come out. I, I mean, in, in in line with that, Rob's list. The other list that I would talk about is Marvel trilogies. Where does this place in Marvel trilogies for you? Well, well, let's remind people. You have the Iron Man trilogy. Iron Man trilogy, which Iron Man 2 was a little bit weak. Iron right. Man 3, 3 was, was forgettable. A little bit weak. I, I like 3 still, but that's fine. You have Captain America trilogy. Yes. Very, very different movies, all three. Yeah. And the third one was sort of an Avengers movie, one and a half movie. 5, yeah. Um, but Under Winter the- Soldier is generally considered one of the high water marks of the MCU. Right. You have uh, Thor. Thor, which again, second movie, major dip in quality. Uh, and the fourth a, movie, I didn't like. Uh, yeah, trilogy, trilogy. That's okay. Because okay. <laughs> four, yeah, doesn't doesn't age well. Right. You have Spider Man. Spider Man, which is not technically fully Marvel, but Spider Man, the the Home trilogy. Again, yeah. the second one was probably the weakest of the three. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Mysterio. I thought that actually that might be might be the strongest, most consistent overall for me. Ant Man. Uh, the Ant Man trilogy. That's five. Which... Ant Man and the Wasp, the second one. That was. I don't even Pretty tough. It. And then is that it, worse than Quantum Mania for you? Ant Man and the Wasp. I honestly don't remember that. Yeah, movie. well, that's how. No, that's the one, one with Ghost and Morpheus. Yeah. Oh, I did not like that one. Yeah. No. Yeah, not great. It's, but you also it's, didn't it's, like Quantum Mania. Well, Ant Man is probably. Yeah. I think Ant Man right now, if we are going to rank them, is the worst of the trilogies. And then I think this. This and the Avengers trilogy, yes, also a weak second one. <laughs> I mean, the Avengers are a little bit different though. That, different. We're talking about individual yeah. character yeah, trilogies, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I counted five. Okay, and plus Guardians. I mean, Guardians yeah. is sort of an. So would you put Guardians? An, but Guardians is an ensemble cast. Oh, fine. It's yeah. not a fine. Where would you put Guardians? As a trilogy, I think probably I would actually say as a the upper half of the trilogy. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's a strong, consistent showing. As much as I didn't like Volume Two. With the humor t- dialed a little bit too high, uh, I just feel again you, you were talking about that kind of distinctive tone, and James Gunn kind of keeps that throughout, right? Uh, whereas the Thors were directed by different people, uh, the Spider Mans was it Spider Mans always done by the same people? Web? I don't know. Anyway, no. uh, Captain Americas were done by different people. The Thors were done by different people. So I, this one just has a more consistent feel throughout the whole thing. It has consistent feel. And the other thing I want to point out is that these were really like tertiary characters that got yeah. elevated. Like he yeah. did a great job of making them household names. Yeah, it's true. Right, and uh, they even have rides at Disney now mm-hmm. that are Guardians rides. I mean, if you if you're producing like a Spider-Man, of course it's going to make a lot. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, everybody yeah. knows all the characters, but right. this guy had to put. You know, five unknown characters and make them yeah. superstars, and yeah. then on top of that, all these villains and storyline. It it is a little bit different because it's good a point. cosmic trilogy. It's, really it's outside point. of Earth, right? Good so, point. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Okay, so let's do final grades, Rob. What's your final grade for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three? Well, after discussion, mm-hmm. I was kind of debating between two grades, but I'm going to settle on a B plus. Mm. Good. Yep. Tell me, what's your grade? <sighs> I don't, I don't, I, I want to, I'm going to say a B plus too. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty high on this one in terms of just the last bunch of Marvel movies have yeah. been not even close to that. Yeah. I mean, it could push to A minus, in fact. I bet, but I'll say a B plus for now. Yeah. And I think that's where I'm going. I think it's an A minus for me. Wow. I think it was, wow. like, yeah, I think if the only thing that kind of stood out for me as bad was the Adam Warlock thing. And that was just kind of really weird. And you could take the whole sovereign Adam Warlock thing out. But, but everything else I thought was But good. that was what I meant by... Yeah. Because it had to be two and a half hours. If you take out Adam Warlock, right. it would have been 2.15, right? Yeah, it would have been a lot tighter. Yeah, it's true. true. But, so, and again, maybe that's the Marvel kind of meddling that kind of yeah. made it worse that you're setting up Adam Warlock for a future project to yeah. fight Kang, who may not be... Well, that's that's a separate movie, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's an A- for me. I, this, really, this, I did enjoy this it. This and Spider-Man uh, No Way Home. No Way Home, yeah. Or sort of the top... Phase four and five for me. Everything yeah. else is like, okay. <laughs> Everything else for me is below that, but not. 
Okay. <laughs> Wakanda forever. Okay. Ooh. Which had some good points. Shang Chi. Which <laughs> had some good points. The Eternals. <laughs> Not much comment there. <laughs> okay, so that's our thoughts on Guardians uh, of the Galaxy Volume 3. Did you watch it yet? What did you think? Let us know if you've uh, seen it and what you thought about what we thought. Uh, you know, this is a good... This is, a, I think, maybe a, a, a hint at Marvel slowly climbing back to form, potentially. And maybe the quality of this as a B-plus will even get Rob into theaters for the Marvels. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, <laughs> until next time, keep watching good movies. We appreciate all your support. Uh, please do like, subscribe, and comment. We'd love to hear what you think. All right. Thanks so much.